Okay, everyone, it's that time of month again. We have fresh new monthly candles, and the beauty of it is that this actually ends at the end of the week. So if you're new here, at the end of every single week, I take some time, we zoom out a little bit, we look at what's happening in the stock market, the crypto markets, the forex market, pretty much all worldwide. Try to get a feel of, of what we could expect to see going into next week. I give some trade ideas, and then this is a precursor for what members only over at Stats Edge Trading get, which is I run all of my algorithms, I output all of the symbols for those algorithms, and show this is what the algorithms are looking to trade next week. We put our own discretion on top of that. Of course, we always make trades our own. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in trading with edge, make sure you go to statsedgetrading.com. You sign up for StatsEdge Pro if you just want access to the free email list that this video comes out on to make sure you get it. You can go there and sign up for that for free as well. Now, without further ado, let's just pop into it. We're going to get started here. And pop me over here, and we'll get started here with Bitcoin. Now you may see me sip my iced coffee from time to time. We've got a long one. I think this is going to take a while because again, we have uh, we have crypto, and then we also have um, FX, and we have stock markets, and then we have that weekly and on monthly charts. So let's get into it here. And as again, always starting with Bitcoin here on the monthly chart, this is starting to look pretty uh, cup and handily to me. Um, and one example I wanted to make was to go back to here, go back to here and talk about the same type of thing that occurred on gold. So this is a chart of gold, massive round of cup that took a long period of time. And then you had this kind of handle type pattern that took place, which again, a handle is just some sort of either very shallow pullback or sideways action. And you had that here in gold. And when you break out, broke out, you had a pretty substantial rally in gold already. Now, if we go over back to Bitcoin, you can see a lot of the same things. Now, not nearly as big, but big potential kind of cup looking pattern and then some sideways action. So obviously we need this to resolve higher in order to confirm this pattern, but so far so good. It's looking looking pretty good to me. Uh, if we take a look at Ethereum and we just, just compare the last month's candle, where this one, you know, we have got a couple days left here, but this month is pretty much right where last month was, right? Not really much of a move. If we look at Ethereum, a pretty dramatic sell-off intra-month. So again, just showing Bitcoin is king. Everything else seems to be following, but Bitcoin is certainly king here. If we're looking at cryptos, if we take a look at, you know, Doge, for example, still hasn't gotten over its all-time high uh, AVWAP, uh, XMR, if we go Solana, I mean, a lot of these things, these monthly candles look way worse. So Solana still has that kind of nice cup and handle look, but, you know, just not Bitcoin's king, right? Everyone's, if there's any sort of worry about what crypto is going to do, people are, are flocking there. So, so again, I already kind of spoiled it with that gold example, but this gold chart is looking very, very well. Uh, if we go into the weekly chart here of gold, you can see a pretty do nothing week, two weeks in a row. So we could see more of this kind of sideways chop and sideways action uh, before things get going. And I guess before I forget, we'll go back and take a look at that Bitcoin chart, but really nothing, right? Big up week last week, big down week this week, but really nothing going on there week to week. Uh, dollar, let's look at the dollar because that had an interesting, interesting month here. I've been talking about this level here on the dollar for a long, long time when it came to the dollar here and just saying, hey, we've got this resistance up high. This is where sellers came in before, up here and up here. And then we have down here below where we have all of this resistance zone. We came down to it this month and then we shot off that briefly. If we go to the weekly chart, you can see we opened the week and we just rocketed all week on the dollar. This to me, feels like a potential revision to the mean kind of play in the dollar. I Could it just pop all the way back up to the top end of its range? Yes, uh, I find that that's more unlikely. So what I'm going to be doing on dollar plays is looking to potentially short uh, as things are kind of bouncing and if we see the dollar start to turn around. So this is going to be, you know, looking to potentially short uh, USD CAD 
right, which broke down here and had some pretty substantial lows. Let me actually just put that on the red list before I forget. Uh, looking at to short uh, the franc if we get any kind of a bounce, but more importantly, looking for a potential continuation short on the yen. So we had this sell off here to the yen and then a bit of a bounce. If we go into the weekly chart, a bit of a bounce this week, I could see maybe potential another couple of weeks of bounce and then maybe we revert from here. It's very interesting to see though, this is the anchored VWAP here on the yen from this level that still continues to seem to hold. Now let's pop over here, take a look at the equity markets and we're gonna start here. Uh, as always, we should just take a look at the S&P 500 and let's go out to a monthly chart, but I'll, I do wanna zoom into a daily chart to show that as well. I'll just click this button that goes to a monthly chart. So big down wick this month, you remember, kind of looked like the end of days on the monthly chart here for a period of time. Uh, we reverse that and close right at the high of the month. So a lot of people got sucked in. It, it's these are this is why I love doing this zoom out because in the moment that yen carry trade unwind felt like <laughs> that's the end of the world. Uh, you look at it, and it's this little tiny wick that you can barely see on a monthly chart. But yes, we had a reversal, and then we just ripped right back up to close uh, right at highs. If we take a look at the weekly chart, another looked like there's a little bit of a sell-off. Again, closed right at highs. Weekly all-time closing highs, uh, but didn't really quite break that level. So I did want to take a look here at, if we go in and take a look at the daily chart of the SPY. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. This was very interesting to me. So, you know, we had this consolidation now. We've been consolidating for about two weeks, right? If I just draw this out, uh, you know, you don't need to be, have, be a CMT to look and say, okay, so from the 19th of August, and we're coming into September, from the 19th of August, we've just consolidated completely sideways. Haven't broken the range one way or the other. Uh, and then this week, we tap right up against that range. Now, to me, this looks very breakout potential like it looks like that we could get some sort of a nice move out of here. And then that would get us to this potential all time high right here. So I would be I'm going to go on record, I would be shocked if they don't hit at this point, if we don't hit all time highs, just to at least shake out some stops, you've got to imagine that there's a lot of people who are short here anywhere in this zone on the SPY. And, you know, they're probably putting their stops above these all-time high candles. Would be surprising if we don't at least shoot to hit that. If we then reverse from that, then, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. But uh, I'm still looking at the seasonality and saying the seasonality kind of tells me that things should be choppy. So I kind of expect things to be choppy. Uh, but certainly doesn't need to be that way, right? So I'm continuing to buy long and hold things long, but still expecting kind of chop in the underlying uh, sectors here. I want to take a look at quickly a couple of these underlying specters seeking of speaking of going into the day the monthly charts and the weekly charts. And one of them here is XLE. So XLE is very interesting from a monthly point of view here for me, because you can see all of the bottoming tails that have occurred here. Right, we've had a bottoming tail right here, so we sell off into this range, and then we bounce. Then we sell off into this range, and we bounce. We sell off into this range, and we bounce. That's happened now four months in a row, where every time we sell below this range, we get a buyer that comes in and dramatically pushes up XLE uh, from there. If we take a look, what's this one going to bring me? The weekly chart. Let's go to the weekly chart here. Ooh, not daily. Uh, weekly. We see the same kind of this downward uh, trend pattern that's been happening for some time. If we take a look and we do right, just a, a quick parallel trend line or parallel channel like this, you can see we've been selling off down in this trend. But if we zoom out, right, that that is at the end of this very long congestion period for XLE. So it's looking like energy still might have its moment if we can break this parallel trend line and we can start to move higher on XLE, move higher on energy. I really do uh, like the look of that. Now, some quick sectors that are kind of interesting. So we have MSOS, um, the weed sector, that had a great day on Friday, 
But overall, this is just, I wanted to show this to show why you don't buy change in trends, right? This has just been selling off for years on this weekly chart. And every time we had a bounce, I even drew out this kind of cup and handle bottom. We had maybe a month of fun times and then it reverses back down. So if you're fighting these overall trends, uh, you certainly have to know that. Burke B, Berkshire Hathaway hit new all-time highs this week and this month. So good for uh, good for Papa Dow there. Last thing I wanted to go over here in the equity markets is just talk about some uh, rotation that may even be happening in the semiconductor index. So look at the week that Tesla had. The earnings were a bit of a nothing burger. The, the only one that really made money on earnings were people who were selling these options that were insanely overpriced, people expecting 25 plus percent moves, crazy moves, never happened. So those people did very, very well. Um, but we still had a down week. But then if we look at the SMH or the semiconductor ETF as a whole, that didn't do nearly as bad. So it tells me that under the hood here, we may have some strength and it may be coming, uh, of all places, from Intel. So let's grab a daily chart and then I'm just gonna move my head out of the way here. So yeah, so here on Intel, we have a nice little pop-up potential. So I'm kind of my, I guess my, uh, I try to do one idea a week, which is a, discretionary idea, which I give to you guys. And then again, the algorithms go to members over at Sunset Trading. So definitely try that out. But one idea I may have as a quick little easy to trade trade is that if Intel gets up and into the gap, I'm going to pick a little bit up and I'm going to put a stop loss potentially under this swing low right here. And just see, again, these are longer term trades. The more I'm relying on my algorithms that are showing me uh, faster kind of trades to make, the more I'm focusing my attention out on the on the time frame. So uh, one of my algorithms, for example, is about a week hold. So it, you know, it's looking for stocks that have moved really, really well, it's looking for you to bid lower on those stocks. So if they come in, they hit your bid and they bounce, that's how you 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 make your profit on them. And again, I've back tested this from 1980 until today. And it works out in the long run really, really well. So I'm just leaning on that for a lot of my short term trading. And like we talked about a couple weeks ago, with Baba, I'm just using these to build a longer term portfolio. So I'm in Baba and eh, vote from right here. Um, but I'm looking at a lot of these on kind of weekly charts, and just saying, hey, is there um, areas that I can buy into for potential larger growth over longer periods of time, uh, where again, I'm letting my algorithms deal with the shorter period of time. So here's what Intel looks like on the weekly chart. Again, this is relative weakness, I like to generally trade relative strength. But this is just something that I think that if I, I, I can take a shot here, it seems like a reasonable place to take a shot on something that's incredibly beaten up. And just say, hey, the whole world hates Intel. Maybe it's time to try some if we can break through this kind of line that I've drawn, pick some of that up next week, and then a swing stop, um, you know, 1950. I'm risking $3 if I'm right, and it gets back to these highs, that's, you know, 10, 20, right? So the risk reward on them is phenomenal. You just have to be okay with setting your trade, setting your stop, and then just kind of move on through life. Now, obviously not investment advice, it's what I'm doing with my money. So thank you everyone for coming by. Uh, thank you for checking out this video. Thank you for checking out Sassage Pro and everything I do there. I uh, appreciate it very much. For members who are watching this, you should be getting an email. You may have already got it, or you may, should be getting an email on later on Sunday, or maybe even on Monday with the holiday that's going on to just kind of wrap up what the algorithm is telling us to take a look at on Tuesday. And I will talk to you guys soon.